The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, dear friends. And this Sunday, 11 Sunday in Orient time, we have a banquet in the liturgy of the Word of the Lord. The Lord who wants to speak to us, speak to our hearts, but that we know become the same people, to allow ourselves to be guided by Him, touched by His love, that He could continue transforming us in what He wants of you and me. Dear brothers and sisters, the first reading, the key of that reading is humility. Humility, a word that is not very used in this world or misused, a word that they want to sell it as it's absolute, that it's not worth to struggle for it. But the world is against what God wants, of what, what God wants in his agenda. He reminds us that today more than ever, we need to work for humility. We need to work on humility. We need to work on that great good and does such a greater good to others. Dear friends, it's the humility of the one who knows himself, a son, a daughter of God, a God that can do everything. It's the humility of the one who knows himself in need of that God. And without God, we are nothing, and we can achieve nothing. The humility of the one who wants to be like Mary, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, because he has seen the lowliness of his slave. That word for me, meanwhile, it was reading the readings. It's key. Because when we hear the word, I am the hand, we know we see that in a negative way, pejorative. It has such a beautiful significance, total possession of Jesus. The goal to which we strive, each one of us, dear men and women, that one mark of difference in the world today is to so set apart and far away from God. We men and women that we want to bring to the world the values for eternity, possession of Jesus. I want to be it. And hopefully we all can aspire to that greater good aspire to be possession of Jesus, that great saint, totus tuus, I'm all yours, I'm all yours, Jesus. That we can be able to see a Mary, that Mary is the model in itself for all of our lives. That we can see in Mary, that handmaid, and that we can walk the footsteps of the mother so that we may please Jesus with our lives every day more. 
dear brothers and sisters, we are called to be atalayas, uh, lighthouses, that we may bring light to others. And how beautiful that that light can guide the path to the other so that they can see where Jesus is and what a beautiful richness that it could be from a life of humility, a life full of God, possession of Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters, we must be like the psalmist, grateful souls. There's nothing that pleases the Lord more than a son or a daughter of God is grateful that we may live in a constant thanksgiving, that we may leave, allow God to be God in our lives, that we may allow God to be glorified through us and reach the world this world that is in so much need of God. This world that the culture of death is stealing them every day more. And we have to work for the culture of life, dear brothers and sisters. It's up to you and me to make God present in our environment. It's up to you and me to bring back the values of God, to return to the world the hope and illusion, love, unity, reconciliation, that if the world would hear me, they would mock me. But how beautiful that we can listen to the applause of Jesus and we rejoice in those values. That's what we're called, dear friends. The second reading, the second reading, the letter to the Corinthians, the key with that reading is trust. Trust in knowing ourselves that we have placed, in whom we have placed our lives, in whom we have placed our joys and happiness. To know that we are in the hands of a God that can do everything and wants everything good. Dear friends, St. Paul tells us we always have trust. It's good that we check ourselves. If you and I are living this Christianity that St. Paul speaks to us about, and we always walk in trust towards God, if we always abandon ourselves to Him, the first one who questions himself is me. And the first one who must feel in that question is me, and that's how each one of us should say. Trust of the children of God, for whom we strive to please Him, says St. Paul, my dear friends, this love that we have for God should come from a personal encounter with Christ that moves us to please Him in all moments that our lives may be a constant desiring, being grateful for making happy that heart of Jesus and that heart of Mary that we love so much. Right, family? Very good. And that's how we should be, a consolation for those hearts. That our lives may be a transparency of Jesus and Mary and they could smile when we see them. that we're doing well, that even though we fall, we get up and we continue and where we're trying. That our north, our goal, our object is to please those hearts that have so loved humanity. Dear friends, let us remember that the world does not want us humble and that's why it has an agenda of power and having and that's the only thing the world speaks about. And the power, and the Lord wants to work on you, and not the one of, of doing, but of being. We have to work the great values that make us enjoy the presence of God for all eternity, dear brothers and sisters. As St. Francis de Sales said, that's worth very little to sell you. 
There's nothing in the world that's worth to lose the grace of the Lord. There's nothing in the world that's worth that we can give our backs to God. And how beautiful to be able to enjoy as a family and that joy that we're continue to enjoy after the beautiful ritual of the, of the Sacred Heart and Immaculate Heart, that, it may, that we may be evident to being grateful to the Lord. And joy is a distinctive feature of the true children of God. And you and I are capable of being a sign of light, hope, unity, love. And that it means to build the culture and civilization of life. That's what it means to be the culture and civilization of love. Dear brothers and sisters, I want to speak a little bit about a letter that I received a few days ago. I am quite dear. My mother. reminds us that evil does not have the victory. Evil does not have the last word. And evil has an end. And how joyful we ought to be of that great truth, dear friends. We see the world all over in all places, and it seems like evil is triumphing. It seems like the agenda of evil is stealing us. And that, what a, a le relief for eyes of that new letter of Mother Founders. Evil does not have victory. Evil does not have the last word, my dear friends. we should unite to that great movement of love. Dear friends, our lives it takes meaning when the measure that we give ourselves to that movement of love, that movement where we exalt the values of God, the values of eternity. And it's there with our lives and there where we gain the dignity of the children of God when we work of trying to make reality the kingdom of God in our lives. Dear friends, love is what triumphs. Love is what has the last word because God is love. And you and I have to walk over those footsteps, those footsteps of those great saints and martyrs And how beautiful a privilege. And that calling to be Christians and that the Lord has allowed us out of mercy to be able to live all of this that we're living. Dear friends, our mother Adela also reminds us that in the midst of darkness, there's always darkness of light. There's always a triumph of light, not darkness, a triumph of light. But we know what we need to make it a reality wherever we have to. And where the Lord planted us and allowed us to blossom. Where the Lord planted you, there we have to be light. We have to be light and remind others that Christ is alive and wants our lives and our souls to give us his life and life in abundance, dear brother, friends. We go all together, dear friends, to work for the construction of this kingdom of God amongst us so that many may be asked and follow the example of life, our example of word, our test, coherent testimony is what the world needs, like the great St. John Paul said men and women, one peace. Dear friends, our example of life 
that our testimony may collaborate with the theme of our year. The victory will come through Mary. And that everything may be for the glory of God. All for the heart of Jesus through the heart of Mary.